Welcome to the Drop Ship Podcast, and we're back today with Good Niche, Bad Niche. Yeah, look at that sound effects now. Good Niche, Bad Niche, Kayaks, welcome to the show. Uh, that's super cheesy. We should add some more cheesy sounds to this sound bar thing. Uh, so good. So <laughs> I good. get this question a lot. I get asked about kayaks a lot, and uh, mm. I, I don't know how to feel about them. I actually want to hear your opinion and see if you've worked with anybody. I know some who have done like fishing kayaks and things like that, but I don't know a ton about it. I know enough to know. Uh, spoiler alert. Ben doesn't like it. I don't know if John likes it, but that's my spoiler alert. I'll tell you why I don't like it a little bit, but what do you think, John? Kayaks, are they a, a good or a bad high ticket drop shipping niche? I think I'm – look, I'm, I'm going to have an opinion by the end of the episode, but I, I, I can see both si- – I think I can see both sides of an argument in my head uh, for for and against them. And I think you're right. I think it is an idea that makes it onto a lot of people's um, list. It's been on a lot of those uh, guru lists that we've uh, pulled apart in the past, some of them. Uh, maybe we should do that again sometime. That was fun. Um that, that's an old episode. I remember we used to do the <laughs> rate it or hate it kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should bring that back. Um, but, uh, yeah, it gets on there a lot. I mean, I, I guess I can see it. it. It's It must be an activity like people when they first are thinking of ideas, niche ideas, market ideas, they're thinking of activities that people do. I guess for some reason kayaking must just pop into a lot of people's minds. I mean, maybe it's a fairly visible kind of thing in some parts of the country. Uh, it comes up here in Australia as well for people a lot. Um, we have a pretty big water water kind of activities culture here. So that's probably not a huge surprise along with a few other things. But um, yeah, I guess there's definitely products there. It, like the product, the, the products themselves tick the boxes in, or, or some of the boxes, right? I mean, definitely price. I mean, you can get kayaks that are up in the four or $5,000 range, right? Um, so yeah, I'm looking at some right products. now. Yeah. Two, you know, there's some $300 ones in here. They're really, really basic. Yep. But, you know, all the way up to, like you said, I'm seeing a $2,300 one. I'm seeing a $5,000. Like, they, they get up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, the price is good. You know, they they are, they are a, like, a larger product. You know, like, they're pretty long. So, I mean, you got to put these in a truck or something. But they're not heavy. So, from a shipping perspective, I, I would say that they're shippable reasonably easily, um, you know, just because they, I mean, if they were really heavy, it would probably be a bit bit more of a pain in the butt, but they're not particularly heavy. So, you know, and then there's, you know, there's a lot of things that can go along with them, you know, um, if you're focused in particular ways. like this. So, there's obviously segments to this market, right? Like from a customer perspective, there's people who just want the really cheap, entry level ones who are just going to go and fool out fool around on a lake for a weekend or a river or something but they're not really into it and then you have people who are more passionate about like the fishing element of it people who fish from kayaks and that tends to be where the more expensive products are right and then those people have other products that they're also using when they go and do that activity so i think there there is that enthusiast kind of element to some of the customers not to the whole market for kayaks but to some of them and then you know, so that is something that we do look for when we're thinking about a, a good market or a good niche to sell in. Um, you know, and so you could really probably drill down on on that uh, or, or aspects of that. Uh, can I challenge that right yeah. there? Because that, that's where my head went right away, right? Like I could see somebody being whatever, kayakdirect.com or something like that, right? Where they sell the fishing one, they sell the hunting one, they sell the, you know, the $300 one, they sell the expert one, they sell the whitewater one. I could see that. And I don't like that idea. I'm just not a, I'm just not a huge fan of that. Whereas like the direction you just went, like imagine someone's a hunter and you know, they, they sell some of the hunting stuff and the blinds and the decoys. And like, I, I don't know what else is high ticket in the hunting niche. I'm just not a hunter. I know I'm from Wisconsin. That's a sin, but like, uh, I'm not a hunter, so I don't get it. But you know, would you focus on that, John? Would you do a hunting type store? Would you do a fishing type store where a kayak is just like one of the things that you sell or, Alternatively, would you focus, like I said in the beginning, and, and be a kayak store, be a kayak direct where you sell all the different types of kayaks? Because that just seems like you would have a hard time honing in on who you're actually talking to. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there was there was probably a time in, in the past where having just like a general kayak store probably would have worked. Um, and I think these days, though, there's there's probably also a greater element of competition in this market than there used to be. Is, is kind of my feeling as well, like in, in the US market particularly, um, where which would make that a, a much 
more difficult prospect. And and yes, the element I don't like about that is that like who are you serving there? Who's your ideal customer? Like, yeah, do you really want to just be, you know, serving the person who's looking for the cheapest option they're going to use it once and then it's going to like kind of grow mold in the back of their garage or something like that? Like there's not – you're not going to make much money on those products for sure, right? The, I would suggest the margins are not fantastic. Um, and the price isn't high enough to support the cost of shipping. So you have to charge people for shipping and all this sort of stuff. So I, I, I think for me, yes, that, that broader idea, I mean, if you know, you've had one of those up and running for, for years, you, you, you're probably doing okay there. But like if you were starting today, no, that, that's not the direction I would head in at all. I wouldn't do that. Um, but are there subsets of that market? And I'm not an expert. I don't use a kayak myself. I'm by no means an expert, but there certainly are subsets of that of that overall market that I think you could go after and sell some other products. Now, exactly what those other products are. Like, like for example, you know, like somebody who's buying a fishing, uh, a kayak for fishing, you can get like these little trolling motors that you put on them as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, would I go and sell all the fishing gear? Nah, probably not because a lot of that stuff is cheap as. It's not high ticket products in the fishing space, but there are some fishing related products that are. So, you know, I would probably want to dive into it a lot more, you know, before I'd say I'd definitely go and do that myself, but certainly that is the direction that I would head in. The products themselves are fine, right? You could, you know, the price is high enough, they're shippable, you know, I could imagine there have been opportunities where, you you know, you, there's supporting products you could sell alongside them to, you know, generate return customers and, um, you know, increase your average order values and all of that sort of thing. Like I could see there being opportunities for that in particular parts of the market for sure. Um, have you ever kayaked? I have. Yeah, I've used the kayak before for sure. So but, um, my in-laws had them and that was part yeah. of, you know, the activities at the lake. Uh, your boy has zero balance. Uh, I, I just, I'm not <laughs> super coordinated on it. No, on, I, anyway, say, so say it's not true. I get in the kayak, like they have a dock, a big, big dock, right? And they were, they were well off the big dock. I get in the kayak and holding the dock. Here comes all the family to wish Ben luck in this kayak. And I let go of the dock and I immediately tip over. Like, this is how like kayak averse I am. I have no balance. Um, they didn't seem like very much fun to me. So I don't know if I would have very much fun selling these. It, it, I, that might sound like a silly reason to say no to this, but that's why I'm saying no to this. Uh, it, cause I don't like kayaks. They don't seem like, fun. and even when I did stay up long enough to like, they had the pedal ones, you know what I'm talking about? Like that you could pedal your feet instead of pedaling your arms. You can um, sell those. You I went for a while those. and like I tipped over and there's a, there's a moment where I'm like 200 yards from home base. My father-in-law is on the deck. He sees me tipped over and he's just watching me try, you know, have you ever tried to get back in a kayak jug in the middle of the water? Uh, and, and the, your boy here who's <laughs> just like not super coordinated with it. Uh, it, it probably took me 10 minutes to get back in here. I didn't even think about the fact that I could just swim to shore with it, you know, just swim over and get on. Uh, so I'm in the middle of the water and just again, my father-in-law is, I don't know. There you go. I don't like kayaks, man. Uh, I've got, I've got the picture in my head of Ben trying it. Drape himself. <laughs> no, it's it's where like you're you're swimming next to it, and then you like, all right, I'm kind of up, I'm kind of up, and then you go over, right? And it's not like you're kind of in there, and yeah, it's. Uh, I eventually got in, in, case anyone was wondering, I didn't drown. Oh my gosh! But I don't, I just don't like kayaks, man. So th- that's why I'm out. But all right, so I like, I kind of like your idea. Sitting here spinning in my head, I think you have to go after one person. So you know, like you know who would probably benefit by selling some of these is like. Honestly, John Murphy, who sells e-bikes for hunting, like he could just add on more things for hunters that would make more sense. This they, they make special hunting ones. Or if you're Do I? having a fishing store, I think, again, I'm not super privy on the high ticket products there. I know there's some reels that could get up there and things like that, and mm-hmm. certainly some mm-hmm. rods that could get up there. Um, but that's that's where I would go. Or, you know, people bow hunt for carp and stuff around here. I'm sure that uh, those jumping fish that are uh, making their way up North America, I'm sure people buy, you know, the the products for that. You couldn't run Google ads for that stuff, but you could hook them in from a fishing kayak and sell them other things that Mm. they would use on their fishing kayak. Uh, I think I would find the person behind here. And I'm sure there's quite a few, right? The whitewater person is very different Mm. than the person buying the the fishing kayak. that's yeah. probably the direction I would go here, but I, 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 I see a lot of people charging shipping here, and that that makes me wonder just how much it does cost to move one of these 
Yeah. And then there, there's also, I think, a B2B element here too. Like there are so many business, businesses out there that rent out kayaks, you know, like uh, resorts or, you know, just like, I mean, here in Australia where I live, you know, there's a couple of rivers around here. They're really beautiful rivers, et cetera, et cetera. And when you go down, you walk along them, there's all these businesses, like little businesses, like a dude in a trailer and he's hiring out kayaks and stuff. Right now, some of those are probably the cheapy ones, but I, I bet you there's people who, you know, rent these things out or have like a, a hotel that's on a lake or a river or something. And for activities for their guests, they hire out kayaks or those ones that you get that you're pedaling that you were talking about before. You can, I know a dude that sells those, that drop ships those, um, you know. So I think there's there's probably some other little, you know, avenues that you right, can explore. I get, I get- I got a weird one. You just made my head go in a weird place. So I've seen, I don't remember whose business is. I've seen it on a few. Imagine someone selling these kayaks. Have you ever seen someone like sell a, um, like a digital course with it too? Or like at free, here's how to start your own guy on the side of the river kayak uh, business, whatever you're calling that. Right. Um, and then they're using that as like an acquisition channel to sell someone the business model of which they need to buy, you know, four or five kayaks from, um, from the, the, the store itself. Have you ever seen anyone do something like that? Like where you're, they're no. training somebody and then the products are a natural extension of that. Like imagine if no, Alex or Mosey's gym yeah. launch also sold, you know, had a gym store behind there where they could sell yeah. all the equipment behind it. It seems like it would make sense. I've just never seen someone do it in reverse, go from the physical products angle into the information products angle, which then leads back into physical. I hope I didn't lose anyone there. No, no, no. I get, I get what you're saying, and uh, no, I've never seen anyone do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's all sorts of, all sorts of possibilities. I mean, yeah, like people at the moment who are out there looking, you know, side hustles are again all the rage. It seems at the moment. Um, I was on a one of our one of our group coaching calls for Dropship Breakthrough yesterday, and we the call ended, you know. It, with us uh, a long conversation about uh, different side hustle ideas and passive income. It was after we released that episode about passive mm. income being a lie and that sort of thing, right? Yeah. One of our recent podcast episodes, um, people were asking me like, oh, what are all these what close to passive businesses that you could run, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, could you buy somebody a bunch of kayaks and pay them to sit on the side of the river for you and hire them out and take a cut? Maybe you could. You know, I mean, there's like, yeah. Could you teach people to do that? Yeah, probably wouldn't be that hard. Mm. And then sell them the kayaks, like turnkey so, business, turnkey business, baby. People love when, that stuff. So that's one angle. You, when you said it, it made me think of the guy on the river. He's got a special trailer that holds six different kayaks, right? And so you, you also are going to sell the roof racks to people who want to hold mm-hmm. them or however they get shipped on a car. Again, I'm not a kayak guy. And so like yep. uh, you just made, this is how you should be thinking about every niche is like where, what yes. are the other things people need alongside it? So if you're going to be the kayak guy, or even if you're the fishing kayak guy, you're going to need other fishing products. You're going to need a way to move the kayak in itself. You're going to need a way to, probably uh some extra camouflage uh for said kayak and um if you're if you're doing the hunting thing or fishing and so like i don't know my head just started spinning of other things that you could do here and this is what everyone who gets on a call with us by the way you can book a call with us if you're thinking about joining the course just go to dropshipbreakthrough.com forward slash call and you'll talk to john or myself uh the ones that i get on I, i end up hearing a lot of the same ideas and i don't think people are letting their mind wander like we just did what what other Sit in what other situations will someone need these and what products come with that as well. Uh, and the racks just like stood out to me as an obvious win. Uh, mm. fitting, fitting them to vehicles can always be an issue, I guess, but people are going to need to transport these things, whether it's the guy on the side of the river with a huge trailer with six of these or whether it's just, you know, somebody in their Toyota RAV4 who needs to throw a couple on top. They're going to need to be able to transport them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and those things are expensive. Like, I mean, if you go on the, the more serious things to go on top of cars, I mean, like I've got on my four wheel drive here, like a, a roof rack system is like fifteen hundred two grand or something like that, I think. Um, when I when I put it on there. So definitely high ticket products down that avenue. And yeah, I think you're right. I mean if if anybody's listening to these good niche, bad niche uh episodes and i think that the things that you should be taking out of these episodes is not so much the products themselves, like this isn't a signal for everybody to go out and start a kayak store, by the way. Um it's it's more like get the thought processes that me and Ben are, to, are, are, are just chatting through here, and this is the way that you should think about all of your ideas. So I had a conversation with a guy, a young fella who's in our course last night actually, and he, 
you know, gone gone in with this idea of this market and this niche to go into and he'd started calling suppliers and the his original idea had a, had a few different product categories and he got some supplies for one of those product categories, but the other ones he was kind of striking out on a bit, like he was having trouble and they were kind of really retail heavy spaces, probably not the best products to go into anyway, um, to be honest. But um, the ones that he got some supplies for, they were good products, he could sell them. Um, but he was kind of like, a, you know, it's in Australia, so there, there are a lower number of total supplies here because of small population, et cetera. And he was like, I kind of feel like I need to have more in my store. And I was like, well, okay, so focus on those products now. Who uses them? Who's the ideal customer for those products? Forget the other stuff you were thinking of. Let's just focus on these. What else? So what are those people going to use those products for? Okay, that there's an activity. Okay, what other products do they need to do that activity? And actually swung the whole idea in a completely di- up for the store in a completely different direction, but still, you know, so he could still use those products that he had got supplies for, but now he's going to go out and call a bunch of other supplies for actually other product categories that weren't in the original idea. And got there by just going through this process that we've kind of talked about on this call, just thinking about the customer. What are the other things they might need? Who are the range of customers? And that's really... Um, you know, when you spend some time to just sit in that and, and maybe look around, do a bit bit of further research, go and look at some online forums for the for the you know if it's an enthusiast niche, go and look at some online forums. What do people talk about? What do they do? What do they go on Reddit? Like whatever, um, and uh, you know, work out all of these little angles you can take because that's I think. You know, some of the best high ticket dropshipping sites I've seen people build is where they've explored those kind of angles and they've gone to a place that nobody else automatically thinks of. Do you know what I mean? And then that's sometimes, you know. It's all about just serving one person, yeah. right? Like if you, you know, when you watch me walk through, hey, if I just sell kayaks, I'm going to have to sell to like eight different people. And how the hell am I going to run one ad to the whitewater guy who's going to make sense for the fishing guy? Like it's going to be a nightmare, right? And so like as you suss out, who you're selling to is it this wide array of different people or is it kind of like a roughly the same person trying to solve the same problem they're just coming at it from a different angle and and then obsess about them obsess about them uh you know blair budlong who will be at dropship breakthrough live here in uh, a month and a half or so we're getting close uh that that's what he did with dexdirect.com he obsessed over one problem and people who were trying to solve one problem around dex and he became incredible at it and then exited his money for or exited his business recently for, for a very large amount of money. I don't know if he's public about it, so I'm not going to say it on this podcast. Maybe he'll tell everyone to dropship breakthrough live, but uh, uh, he did very well and he started out dropshipping, right? And so, like, there's a yeah, obsess about the who. I can't say this enough that don't think about the products. The products will solve itself if you can obsess about the who. 